Hello everyone, welcome back to Rex Nebular and the Cosmic Gender Bender. Okay, so, um, as usual I really don't know what I'm doing here. Um, Rex seems to have some idea of who this person might be because uh, he said something like, yeah, that's right, go into the hut last time. Uh, but I don't know who that person might be. Um, I'm assuming it's a woman since this appears to be a place only inhabited by women. But let's take a look around here and then see what, what's going on over there. So here's a fire pit. It's cold. There hasn't been a fire here for some time. Okay. Can we climb up the ladder? A food lookout, no doubt. From the tower, that large woman could probably see edibles 200 yards away. Okay. Can we climb up the ladder? This might also make us more visible. Great view. Okay. That doesn't seem to do anything. All right, what's what's in this hut? Oh, actually, there doesn't... Look how big that doorway is. Somebody wide must live here. Boy, they don't get tired of those fat jokes, do they? Barf City! Why? What's, what's inside there? I don't know. Anyway, there's a skull here. This previous one must have been a snack for what's-her-name. It's been picked clean. Can we take, uh, take some of this stuff? Okay, we can take the bone. Can we gnaw on it? <laughs> okay. Uh, can we take the skull? It's too large. Perhaps you can find a smaller bone to carry around. All right. Oh. Oh, now we have two bones. Okay. I like the way they spin around, kind of... Kind of counter-rotating bones like a... Like a Soviet helicopter. Okay, um... Some of the rocks bear interestingly these ratchets. Could someone have been sharpening their teeth on these rocks? Boy, um... Uh, wow, even the grass has been eaten. Boy, that, uh, that lady, uh... She was not particularly discriminating in what she would eat. Um... All right, let's see. I worry that we might get into trouble doing this, but let's see what happens when we go to the uh, to the north of here. What is that? Okay, is that just a pterodactyl or something? Okay. What's this strange device? This is the booth that woman appeared and disappeared. It must be some kind of teleportation device. Okay, that makes sense. And that back there is a weather station. This meteorological monstrosity appears capable of simultaneously reading the wind speed, barometric pressure, relative humidity, your palm, and Moby Dick. All right. You know what's funny is the word Moby is actually used in some cultures as kind of a word meaning large. So, you know, Moby Dick, yeah. Okay, uh, ooh, an anemometer. Is this Space Quest 3? Can we, can we take it like in Space Quest 3? No? What about the other one? Oh, that's a weather vane. Can we take the... Can we take the weather vane? No. Okay. The rocks are not interesting. The field is basically grassy. The grassy field is basically grassy. That sounds like something LGR would say. Um, tree? The tree is a tree. Hmm, yes, this tree is made of tree. Okay, there's really... Yeah, there is an island back there, but... Oh, it appears to be a volcanic. Okay. Yeah, this game doesn't seem to have a lot uh, a lot of uh, non-linearity. Like, it's pretty pretty much just a straight uh, sequence of screens. And Okay, I guess obviously we're supposed to go inside the strange device here. Let's go into the strange device and see what strange things happen. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess... Did it just zero through in a company a smile key and a frown key? Printed foam number pads provide comfort when pressed. There's a forged number written on the panel above the display. I wonder what the frown key and the smile key do. Does the frown key just Oh wow. Wow, look at Look at that animation. You don't just click on the button and just have it be he actually reaches out with his Wow, that is cool. Okay, so the code's going to be four digits long. It's a cylindrical object containing so many electrons and keypad and a shipwrecked space adventurer. Yes, that's us. All right. Um, 
this looks like it says on air. Okay, interesting. I guess there's nothing much else here that we can... Uh... Okay, um, does the frown key act as like a clear button to clear what we've entered if we changed our minds or mistyped something? Yes, it does. That was a uh, that was just a a wild guess, but I guess that's good user interface design. No uh, no words that might confuse foreign people who don't speak uh, the language here. Just uh, just a sad face for no, I didn't want that. Clear it or happy face for yes, I wanted that. I'm going to guess. I'm just assuming this number here is the teleport code to reach this location. Kind of like you know how telephone booths used to have the their own telephone number written on them. Uh, or printed or whatever labeled on them. Um, so I'm going to guess, well, let's see. I mean, just out of curiosity, let's try entering 3457 and see what happens. But I'm going to guess that that's the code to take us here. In which case, let's press the smile key. Or maybe not. Oh, yes, yes, it is. Okay, so we just teleported back here. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, that's good to know. So that's the teleportation code for this location here. Um, but it does leave us with the question of where to teleport to because uh, we need another... Let's see. I'm just wondering, do I have anything in my... Oh, I didn't even see this before. Bezel Bodies Novelty Shop. Asteroid blah overrating bagel juice nine. Covered one hundred percent genuine leather. Um gosh, I don't know. I'm just checking my inventory items to see if maybe some of these might have a code written on them, but I don't think so. I mean it's not likely that the blowgun would have anything written on it, and these binoculars are not from this planet, so yeah, and what are the chances that the bones have something written on them, so they're not big enough to be femurs, nor are they small enough to be fingers. You're not exactly sure what kind of bones these are. They might not be human bones, theoretically. Uh, but anyway, okay. So I guess we need a, a number. We need to... Um, we need some way of figuring out uh, a number to punch in. I wonder... Oh... Probably, okay, I'm going to guess then, let me see, let me see, I'm just thinking if maybe when that person walks out of the teleporter and goes back in, maybe there's a way to, um, I'm thinking of two possibilities right now. The first possibility is theoretically that, um, uh, when they, um, uh, Okay, do we need to... Okay, let's see. Maybe what I need to do is hurriedly, quickly... Oh. Hi, I'm Rex. Okay, that was clearly the wrong thing to do. Hi, I'm Zatox. Hi, I'm Zatox. Okay, well... Yeah, that was clearly not the right thing to do. Okay, binoculars, look at... Use binoculars to look at strange device. That's right, go inside. Okay. Right, okay, so she's carrying clipboard using it. Okay, she, so she's re recording readings from the weather station. That's fine. I think that's probably not important. But yeah, she types something in, but her shoulder is blocking your view. Then she vanishes. So is there some way to... I'm just thinking because... Yeah, like I said, I imagine two possibilities. The first possibility I thought was that maybe sometimes um, after you use a teleporter, the number that you've typed in remains here. Or what if I just type smile without... No. Is there a way to recall the previous number? No, it doesn't look like it. It always shows you what you've typed, yeah. Um, okay, I was thinking maybe there's a way to somehow get it so that the, the number that she put in remains on the display after she's gone, but that does not appear to work. So I can only imagine... Oh, that's probably what this... Okay, I get it. That's probably what this is for. Probably when we've climbed this, we can see over her shoulder. This is called shoulder surfing in, uh, in information technology. 
All right. Or not specifically in information technology, but in, in security design. Oh, here we go. Three, five, nine, nine. Oh, I didn't even know she was going to type nine in again. I just said nine to be funny because, you know, Cookie Monster sings Rammstein. Uh, okay, so that was three, five. Whoops. This ladder's had it. All right. Well, that might, might be a good thing to save as. So let's go ahead and save as um, 3599 so I don't forget because I'm not good at memorizing numbers. I'm actually pretty bad at memorizing people's phone numbers and things like that. So, okay, let's go ahead and give it a try. Um, yeah, in, in real life, that's called shoulder surfing when you look over somebody's shoulders or typing in a password or a code or something so that you can see them typing it in. So, three, five, nine, nine, smile. Uh oh. Freeze, scum! Oh, that's a woman, I guess. Freeze, scum! Uh oh. I am Lieutenant Cena. We've been expecting you. You are now our prisoner. Turn slowly and follow me. If you resist, you will be killed. Why do these women here take us prisoner, but the other woman at the weather station just shot us? Do it, scum! Okay, already. So why do these women take us prisoner, but the other one just shot us dead instantly? Like, what's the deal with that? I mean, is there not any kind of protocol for dealing with foreign uh, extra planetary visitors? I like the way the bow tie on this. Assume the position, missionary. Quiet scum. I like the bow tie on that statue is glowing like that. Follow her, scum! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't you think of any more original words to use? Come on, be a, li be a little creative. Women are supposed to be smarter than men. Use some more creative... Uh... Well, maybe this game was written by a man. Who knows? Ooh, traffic light. I like the traffic light. Is that a traffic light for a pedestrian corridor? Do you really need a traffic light for a pedestrian corridor? Well, things just suddenly changed quite drastically. Okay, I guess that's a force field with the lines going across it like that. I guess these are prison cells. Look, I mean, that looks obviously like a prison cell. Doesn't even have it doesn't even afford the private Oh. Crunch. Be careful, we lost a guard to that one last week. Yeah. I'll be careful, sir. Why do they keep calling each other sir when they're women? I mean I mean yeah, I guess you can choose your okay, anyway. Grrf. Wow, what is with all these weird huge mutated monsters in these cells? That's kind of Halt, scum! This will be your cell. Go inside. We'll be back later. Okay. I'm going to assume... This is just a wild guess, but I'm going to assume... Psst! I'm going to assume that we should try to escape from here. So let's see, what do we have here? That's a wall. Yo! Okay, uh... The back wall of the cell is obviously carved from solid rock. The other walls are made of a strong ferrous material. The only obvious means of egress is the front of the cell, which is currently protected by a powerful force field. Um, okay. So, hey, yeah, I, I understand there's somebody talking to me from there, but do I talk to the to talk to the wall? Oh, uh, hello. Hey, you in the next cell. Hey, you can talk. You're a man, aren't you? Uh, yeah. 
I thought so. You looked like one. Boy, are they going to have fun with you. Uh, who are you? Call me Bud. Okay, I guess that's another man. Call me Bud. It's easier than trying to pronounce my real name. I am an explorer from another sector. I was checking out the system when I discovered a mass reading where there shouldn't, shouldn't have been one. A minute later, this big ship decloaks and blasts me. They found me unconscious in my escape module and brought me down here. That was a month ago. All I can think about now is getting out of here. Okay. Um... I'm tempted to ask about the thing in the cell next to you, but I'm hoping I'll have an opportunity, to do, an opportunity to do that later. So what is this place? This is a small underground complex inhabited by female humans who call themselves Keepers. What little I know of this place I learned overhearing the guards. It seems there are no human males here, so I can understand their interest in you. Aren't you a human male? Um, let's see, do we just go through all these in order? I guess we can, yeah, we just... Just might as well. So who are all those lovely ladies on the surface? The keepers refer to them as stock. They must mean breeding stock. Beats me how they keep reproducing without any men around. I really need to get out of here. So where are all the men? I haven't figured that out yet. I've heard people refer to the Great War, but I don't know what they're talking about. God, I hate this place. Uh, is there any way out of here? You think I'd still be here if there was? I've tried everything. I think subjunctively it, it sounds better if you say were. You think I'd still be here if there were? Because this is obviously, you know, theoretical subjunctive mood. I've tried everything. If I could just get past this force field, I'd teach those guards a thing or two about putting sentient beings in cages. I'd kill anything that got between me and that teleporter. Speaking of things, uh, what is that thing in the cell next to you? Whatever he is, he's hungry. He's got me plenty mad, too. I'm sick of listening to screaming and munching noises all day long. I asked him to be quiet, but he ignored me. He asked me if I was light meat or dark meat. If I get loose, I'm going to bust him up pretty good. Uh, I don't know what you look like, Mr. Bud, sir, uh, but unless you are about the size of that... Well, maybe you're that horrible mutant in, in another... Like, you're another horrible mutant in another cell. Then maybe, okay, maybe you could give him some competition. Uh, I'll try to bust us both out of here. Thanks, pal. If you can get me out of this cage, I can take out these guards and their puny machines. Okay, it's been nice talking to you, friend. Just get me out of here. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm working on it. Let's see. So there's a sink. Egad, look at all that stringy hair clumped together in the drain. It's just like your sink, except that there isn't anything crawling around in it. Toilet. Noticing the seat is down, you quickly conclude that the last prisoner must have been female. You're momentarily stunned by your own brilliance. Let's see. Can we... Uh, Oh, there's no use option. We can't even use the, the sink or the toilet. Okay. Uh-oh. Was I too slow, or... You must come with us. Doc Slash wants to see you. Heh <laughs> Okay. I'm going to assume that I couldn't do anything, and I just had to wait for the guards to come back. No funny stuff, scum. Ma'am, can you please think of a different insult? I mean, even scumbag would be more creative than just saying scum over and over. Get on the gurney! That thing? No way. Hiya! Oof. Okay, well. There's an intern here. This pretty young woman is tinkering with something on the instrument table. This will be where the attending physician keeps medical instruments. The only items of, of note on it are a corkscrew, a feather, and a scalpel. These don't look like friendly instruments. Okay. Look at Gurney for the moment. This is home. Uh, there's a sink over there. It looks like a normal sink, although I don't think you can really see... I don't think Rex can really see much from here. Wow, those are big water drops that fall out of that faucet. Judging by the size of the faucet, there must be a great deal of cleaning up to do around here. You wonder what sort of activity would require such frequent large-scale cleaning. Hmm, gosh, I wonder. Yeah, those are huge water drops that come out. Uh, the walls look like they're coated with something. It's probably some sort of sound isolation. Hmm. A large... So you have a conveyor belt. This would be where they put the less cooperative guests. So you have a large conveyor belt leading up to a saw blade. Yeah, that large blade does not look... Uh, well, okay, that's pretty obvious what that's for. There's a table here. Cabinets here. 
These are the strangest cabinets you've ever seen. They look more like filing slots for loose limbs. Your curiosity regarding their cons quickly subsides. A monitor here that's not on. Some equipment. Not unlike the equipment in the rest of the complex. Its purpose is completely beyond you. Uh, let's see. Can I... Oh. Can I try taking stuff here? Like, can I take the scalpel? Hey, don't touch that! Okay. I guess I can't take stuff while she's... Let's see. Walk across floor. Yeah, why not? Okay, it doesn't even say anything if I try. Um, is there anything else here to look at? Doesn't seem like it. I guess I need to talk to the intern. <clears throat> what? Where am I? You are in our medical facility awaiting examination. It's kind of like the beginning of Mondo Medicals. You have applied for research. Uh, examination? What examination? We need to determine if your genes are worthy to be mixed with ours. If so, you will serve as breeding stock. If not, you will serve as fertilizer. Um, neither of those... Well, he says breeding stock... I was going to say neither of those sounds terribly appealing, but he says breeding stock doesn't sound so bad. Um, I'm not sure that he's actually... Well, okay, let's not get into too much uh, biomedical detail. Let's just say it doesn't sound too bad. You would probably enjoy it. Then again, there may be some discomfort between the 600th and 800th times. Naturally, the second day is worse. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, if you if you have to do it over and over, it becomes kind of uncomfortable and painful after a while. It's not, I mean, yeah, if you just do it once after not doing it for a while, then yeah, of course, it's it's all right. But yeah, if, if you have to do it 800 times a day, that's, yeah, it, that will not be, pl what, okay, it's physically impossible. I mean, people can't, okay, anyway. Uh, why do you need me? Because we need to continue our race. Since there are no men around, we must either use the dreaded gender bender or capture the occasional stranger such as yourself. So what is a gender bender anyway, as if the name doesn't give it away? It's a machine that changes the user's sex. We disgrace ourselves by using it, but it's the only way to continue our race. Unfortunately, the effect wears off at, un wears off at unpredictable times. So there are some awkward, awkward moments. Um, you can maybe just use your imagination to uh, decide how that uh, manifests itself. Where are all the men? They all died when we won the Great Gender War. Thanks to the gender bender, we had no need for their filth. Of course, the occasional pet such as yourself can be useful. So what's a transmorph? Presumably a transsexual. Transmorph is the villager term for a keeper who has had their her gender bent. They don't think much of our machine and blame us for the lack of men, but they serve their purpose. Okay, and who are you? I'm going to assume you're an, a medical... I am Dr. Slage's assistant. I don't know how to pronounce it. Is, is that Slage? Sl Slashe? Oh, maybe it's Slash. That's more likely, because I remember, well, no, I'm trying, not too much of a spoiler, but I, I think I remember the scene that follows this one. Um, okay, it's probably Dr. Slash, then. I provide her with sharp instruments and clean up after her examinations. This is fun. I don't talk to many real men. Um, would you mind untying me? Sorry, I can't do that. As much as I'd like to, you're a patient, and we must have a look at you. Do you know anything about a precious vase? Vaz? No, sorry. I'm not much into art. Too bad for you the men are all dead. I heard they used to consider art collections a status symbol. The richer ones had huge collections. Can you tell me about those art collections, or these art collections? Do I look like a history teacher? I didn't know who had what. That was before I was born. Well, you know, you're an educated young woman. I mean, I think people in university usually study humanities as well as their major, but okay. Never mind. Uh, I guess that was the end of that conversation. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Whoa. Uh-oh. I'll bet that's Professor Pyro again. I better go see what happened. You stay here. As if I had a choice. Okay, this seems like a good time to take things from the table, like the scalpel. You reach quickly will enter and out of the room. You reach and grab the scalpel. You, you squirrel it away in your sleeve and hope that no one will notice its absence. Okay. And let's take some other stuff. Oh, wait. So I don't, oh, okay. Take the... Wait, is there anything else? It's There's there's a corkscrew, a feather, and a scalpel, but I already took the scalpel. Was there another scalpel, or did it, did it just... 
Okay. What do we do with the scalpel? Do we sharpen it? Okay, that won't get you anywhere right now. Okay, do we cut with it? The scalpel is cut gurney. Or do you want to do a wretched thing like that? I don't know. Do it. Okay, pry gurney? Uh oh. Uh oh. Now then. Let's see. I don't think there was a way to avoid this. I don't think that you can actually uh, escape the gurney in time. Okay, that woman has some pretty wacky hair. I mean... Okay, I mean, you can... Okay. I am Dr. Slash. I will now ask you a series of questions. If you cooperate, this will be easy. If not, it will be, well, more entertaining. So, do you have any history of heart trouble? Let's see, a slight murmur. Ticker's in great shape. Don't know if you should check it. Oh, there's this gal in umbilica at nine. Um, I don't know if there are right or wrong answers here. Uh, oh, also there's a tomato and something else here. Um, let's see. Maybe you should check it since you're a doctor. This is Mr. Blackjack. So once again, do you have any history of heart trouble? Um... I'll, I'll say yes, a slight murmur, maybe. I don't know, should I try to imply that I'm great breeding stock, or... I don't know. Uh, okay, let's say a slight murmur. Ah, do you have any kidney or liver disorders? Um, I'm going to assume that saying you're the doctor you tell me will probably get us introduced to Mr. Blackjack again. Let's give it a try. Yes. Okay, um... I can't remember? Oh dear. Mr. Club. For the last time, do you have any kidney or liver disorders? Um... Boy, um... Let's go all the way. Go big or go home, right? Go take a flying leap, ma'am. Then meet Mr. Chainsaw. Okay. I'm getting the impression that this is not a woman to be trifled with. Okay, let's go ahead and just give straight answers. No, my heart's in great shape. Do you have any kidney or liver disorders? Uh, sure, yes, several. Are you an any or an outy? Uh... Um, I wonder if there's a right answer. Let's let's say we're an Audi and proud of it, just because. Ah, thank you for your cooperation. Making bombs again, eh? This is Mr. Hypo. Wait, not Mr. Hypo. Oh, I think that was the nighty night. That was the intern over here speaking. <sighs> Well, here I am again. Ah, but now I have the scalpel. And I'm going to assume that the scalpel will be instrumental in our escape from this cell. So, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, back in cell with scalpel. And that'll be it for now. We'll see what we do with the scalpel next time in a further exciting episode of Rex Nibular and the Cosmic Gender Bender. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hey, pal, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. We'll talk to you next time, friend. S sit tight for now. Uh, yeah, take care, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you all later. Bye-bye, and don't say hello to Mr. Blackjack or Club or Chainsaw if you can help it. Try to avoid that, please.